good morning and welcome to Worship on Christmas Day 2020 and a very happy Christmas and a very blessed Christmas to you all. Just a short meeting this morning um, but that sense that in the troubling year that we've had this year maybe more importantly than, than ever before a need to come before God on the day of the birth of Jesus. So however you are spending Christmas Day, whether you are able to spend it with loved ones or whether you are on your own, may there at least be a moment today when the truth and the blessings of the Nativity touch your hearts and minds. Let's pray together. Father God, release the joy in us that has been crushed by pride, wrong priorities or world events. Tear down the strongholds that have held us captive for far too long. Extinguish the flames of apprehension that rob us of a calm, quiet spirit. Show us again the beauty of that holy night so many centuries ago. Your name is still called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. As your children, we cry out for a fresh filling and a new awareness of who you are. We choose by faith to make the good news of great joy a reality in our own lives so others can see us as lighted trees of life pointing to you this Christmas. We know that peace on earth can only come when hearts find peace with you. You are still our joy. You are still our peace. You are no longer a babe in the manger. You are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we still celebrate you as Lord this Christmas and always. Amen. And now a, a carol uh, for us to join in together. Um, it's the carol Wonderful Counselor. Um, I make no apologies for the fact that this isn't the first time I've used this in one of the online services this season. Um, and I particularly chose it for the line, No more a world in darkness, the light has come. Let's share this carol together.
Bible reading which is from John chapter 1 and I'm reading verses 1 to 14. In the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognise him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of of the Father's one and only Son. Amen. And now a second carol, The First Noel.
Christmas story and therefore as a result a lot of the Christmas carols um, centres on the concept of Christmas being about light conquering darkness. Now sometimes in our very modern world of artificial lamps and 24-7 lighting we would struggle to imagine what it must have been like for our own ancestors as those last few shreds of daylight disappeared on a winter's evening. Several years ago, we were on a family holiday uh, in Derbyshire and we went to a tourist attraction called Clearwell Caves. Uh, and as we went around the caves, we had to wear the, the sort of caving helmets with the lamp on the front. And at one point, the, the guide uh, asked everybody to turn off their lamps all at the same time so that we could experience what absolute darkness was like. Uh, of a night time in, in our country, we don't experience absolute darkness because obviously there are still street lamps on or you have had moonlight. So to actually be underground where no natural light can get in and then to turn off all the artificial light was a, an amazing experience. And that that darkness was oppressive. It, it weighed down on you. Um, it had a, a completely different quality to any other type of darkness I'd ever experienced before or since. In the Old Testament, we often see light being used as a representation of the presence of God. According to the story in Genesis around creation, on the very first day of creation, God says, let there be light. Now, this light wasn't the light of the sun, the moon or stars, because those were created subsequently in, in that story. Um, this light was something else. This was the light of the pure presence of God. God is light. When Abraham encountered the presence of God, it was as a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch appearing to Abraham in what's described as deep and terrifying darkness. Abraham's grandson, Jacob, experiences a fiery ladder with angels climbing up and down it to heaven. And then we move forward to the time of Moses and we have the Hebrew slaves newly liberated from Egypt. And as they're journeying across the desert, they were led by a pillar of fire by night. And then when we come to the Psalms, we read that God's word was experienced by the writer as a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So no wonder then when we get to Isaiah and his prophecies, he's also using this imagery of light and he associates the coming of light with the coming of the ideal king. Now, ancient Judaism had a festival of light, Hanukkah, which is obviously still celebrated to this day. And it's an eight day celebration of light as the winter solstice approaches. And it commemorates, Hanukkah commemorates the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem after it had been destroyed by an enemy army. And what is celebrated is the return of God's glory seen as light to his temple. Light and darkness are also extremely important themes in John's Gospel. Now at the very start of his account, which is seen in this first chapter as a prologue to the rest of the book, he uses light imagery to describe the coming of Jesus. And it's believed that this section of his Gospel would have been a, a hymn maybe, or at least a poem of the early church. Interestingly, John's Gospel begins in the same way as Genesis, in the beginning. So what was there in the beginning? It was the word. The Greek word used is logos. And we are told that through the logos, God created everything. John says that the logos was life 
and that life was the light of all people, a light that cannot be extinguished by any form of darkness. John, as we've mentioned before, does not have a nativity story, but this section, this first part of his gospel, functions in the same way. It heralds the coming of Jesus, this true light to our world, and announces his mission, which is to illuminate the darkness for those who are trapped within it. 2020 has been a year of darkness. The most recent statistics on the coronavirus pandemic still make shocking reading. A total of 2 million cases in the UK, 67,000 deaths. Between the 12th of December and the 19th of December, that seven day period, Blyna Gwent had 713 new cases alone. And over the same period, Blyna Gwent had 197 deaths. And of course, there's all the collateral damage of lockdown. Businesses being shut down, an increase in unemployment, other hospital work being put on hold with a, a knock-on effect for things like cancer and the mental health and addiction problems as people struggle to cope with lives in isolation. Dark times indeed. Now it would be very, very trite of me at this point to say slightly glibly that, well, you don't need to worry because Jesus is the light for all that darkness and you just need to trust in him. Because quite frankly, as I experienced in that cave all those years ago, the darkness can be very oppressive. It can close in on you, convince you that there's, there's nothing out there beyond the darkness. And so putting your trust in something that's intangible can then be extremely difficult. I understand that. But I, I just urge you to hang on in there. Although the statement that Jesus is the light that overcomes the darkness is the central message of Christmas, I'd like to approach it from another angle. You see, when I stood in that cave, surrounded by absolute darkness, that really kind of uncomfortable feeling only ended when I turned on the lamp. I needed the lamp to be able to benefit from the light. When our ancestors lit their candles as the daylight faded, they needed the candles to be able to benefit from the light. As we flick the switches of our electric lights at night, we need those lamps and the electricity to be able to benefit from the light they bring. Light needs a vessel a, a conduit, a bit of funky technology to spark it into life and keep it burning. Anyone who's ever lovingly tended an outdoor barbecue knows the effort you need to put in to keeping the flame going. Well, it's the same with the light of Jesus. The darkness will never extinguish it completely, but it burns brighter when there are vessels to carry it, bellows to fan it, conduits to pass it on. So maybe the message of Christmas this year to you, God's wonderful people, in the darkness of 2020, is that we all have the responsibility of ensuring that the light of Christ is passed on to all those who need it. Maybe we need to look the Christ child in the eye and pledge that we will be the ones who carry his light into the deepest darkness. And let's face it, we don't have to go far this year to find the deepest darkness. The darkness is around us. It's, it's in the neighbour who hasn't seen a living soul for weeks. It's in the single mum struggling to keep toddlers happy over a Christmas in isolation. And it's in the healthcare workers, the teachers and the food retailers who are totally exhausted after dealing with the stress of work and their own concerns that they might be bringing the virus home to their families. You have the light of Jesus within you. Now share it. Share it via text message, video call, 
the telephone or a socially distanced chat on the doorstep. Simply smiling at people in the street doesn't work anymore. They can't see it when you've got a mask on. But a kindly word or an offer of help. These are lights in the darkness that can truly lift someone's day. And I'm not talking about preaching at them. I'm talking about being light, being help, being love. And for those of you who are struggling in your own darkness, I'll say it again, hang on in there, because God is going to send one of his vessels of light. And it won't necessarily be a perfect vessel. It may be cracked and broken. But if I might be permitted to take a little bit of liberty with scripture, blessed are the cracked for they let in the light. As 2020 draws to a close, I pray that we will all experience the Christmas story as a reality of light and love in our hearts. And as that light burns with heavenly radiance within us, may we be inspired to pass it on to others so that even in the darkest places of our world, the light of the Christ child will shine. Amen.
And now before our final carol, which is While Shepherds Watched, a benediction. Shall we pray? This Christmas, I wish for you light to crumple up the darkness. This Christmas, I wish for you love to pull us closer to one another. This Christmas, I wish for you peace, the same the angels sang. This Christmas, I wish for you starlight to follow on your way home. This Christmas, I wish for you promise to keep hope alive for you. This Christmas, I wish for you God, newly born and in the flesh. This Christmas, I wish for you Jesus Christ, born this day, light of the world. Amen. <laughs>